Hi, um, just before we start the tutorial, I'm just going to quickly show you how to um, download and unzip the files I've attached, which you're going to need for this tutorial. Um, so if you just open up the terminal, and then I've got the link here, um, which is going to be underneath the video, but you'll copy it from there. And then um, you're going to go, well, change directory to where you want, but I'm going to put mine in downloads for now. Uh, and then I'm um, going to do word get, which is um, like downloads a file basically. Um, and then that's simple. You've got your file there, um, which is showing up in downloads. And then you just need to type unzip pi shooter part one. And then um, all the files are there that you're going to need. Um, so yeah. Um, enjoy the tutorial and that's going to start now. Cheers. Hello and welcome to the sixth tutorial. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make your first game in Pygame. And um, the game we're going to make is going to look like this at the end. Um, it's not finished yet because I'm going to do the tutorial in two parts. Um, but basically what we're going to have by the end is we're going to have... Um, the Raspberry Pi logo moving across the screen and the mouse is the um, the crosshairs and basically when you click um, which I haven't done yet, when you click if you hit it then there'll be like a little um, explosion animation and then we'll add like a score and maybe some sound as well but um, it's just to show you like how to make a basic game really um, so what I'll do is I'll show you through the code. Um, it's it's not very ideal. I mean, because I have to learn learn how to do it before I show the tutorial. I usually end up having to write the code and then walk you through it. But um, still, I'm still able to give you quite a good explanation of how everything works. Anyway, so um, I've started off by. Um, comment and Raspberry Pi shooter game written by Liam Fraser for Raspberry Pi tutorials okay so let's run the run through the code so we've got um, we're going to import um, Pi game sys random and OS and um, we're importing sys so we can exit the program and um, you'll see how that works later on random for random numbers and um, the reason we need random numbers is because uh, I'll show you as as you saw before, um, we randomly choose a Y coordinate, so the height that the um, logo moves across the screen, so it's different every time. Um, so that's why we're doing that. And OS is used just to center the window, so it looks a bit smarter. Um, and then we've got from Pi Game Locals import, and we're importing like constants used by Pi Game. So um, if you see down here. Um, event all the event types so like quit and then in the next um, tutorial there'll be like event types such as like mouse button and stuff like that um, and you might notice as well I've decided to change change the way I do my comments um, just because it it's easier to see them if they're um, if they're green like I used to do them like this so like with a hash comment but um the comments in green are a bit easy to see so it's the same as doing the multi-line comments with the three um, like quotation marks but you just don't put an enter after them and you just use them on the one line I just think it looks a bit smarter um, so anyway then we're going to initialize the um, the Pi game components and then this next line here which is why we need OS is um, OS.environment and then there's an environment variable called SDL window position, and you set that to center. Um, and the reason we're using SDL window position is because Pi Game is actually like um, a Python interface to SDL, which is um, which is short for Standard Direct Media Layer. Um, the next line, we're just going to set a title, so Pi Shooter. So when you run it, it'll say Pi Shooter in the top, so it just looks a bit smarter. And then um, from the previous tutorial you will you will have seen this so we're setting a display um three seventy wide by five four two high and then thirty two bit colour. 
um, then we're reading, um, well, then we're storing file names as variables. So, um, so basically the names of your files are going to go in there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to include the files this time so I don't have to spend like the first 10 minutes of the tutorial showing you how to make the, um, make the graphics for the game. Um, that's really up to you to sort of mess around and um, GIMP or whatever image stuff you're going to use to make your graphics. And then once we've got the um, the variable, the file names into variables, we're going to convert them all to surfaces, um, so they can be like understood by Par Game. Um, something we're going to do in this tutorial that we didn't do last time is use a clock so we can um, limit the frame rate because if you don't limit the frame rate then your game ends up taking all of the um, CPU because the while loop just repeats too quickly um, and this way you get to limit the frame rate a bit um, we're going to set the mouse to invisible as well so that's just so um, if you see the the cursor disappears so it's nice to just have like the crosshairs that you can move around rather than having a mouse over the top um, and then we're going to um, these variables are just sort of initialises to hold like where the Pi logo is um, it always starts with the Y coordinate of 60 and um, the X coordinate is like minus 50 and it's minus so like it starts half off the screen and then this Pi speed here is used later on um, and you, that's just how many pixels each um, it moves across the screen each time this while loops run um, so at the start of our loop, we've got the event, the event handlers. So um, basically, there's like every time an event happens, it goes into this collection of events. So for, um, and then for each event, there'll be this will be looped. So like next time, um, I'm gonna well next time we'll be doing mouse input. So it'll be like else if event type equals mouse down or some something like that um so you put all your event handlers in there and then um once you've done that you've um we're going to draw the background image onto the screen and then um this section here is going is all the code that moves the um the logo across the screen so the first thing we're going to do to do that is to um, get the coordinates of like the screen bounds, so how big the screen is, and that's so if the um, that's so if like the logo starts moving off the screen, we can reset it so it goes back to the left side and starts moving across again. Um, and then every time the every time the loops run, you're going to add the sp add the um, the variable up there that we've set, which is. Um, pi speed which is how many pixels that's 10 so um the x coordinate of the pi logo um is this is what it is add 10 so so um yeah that's that's the same as doing like pi x equals pi x plus pi speed and then um here's that like if if statement so if pi x is more than or equal to the screen bound x coordinate and set it back to minus 50 um, and then we're going to set y to a random number in the range of the screen bounds so we've got pi y um, and we're going to start it off at 50 and that's just so if the coordinates if like the random number for example is 0 then it'll be all the way at the top of the screen so we want it to be at least 50 down and then um, so and then we've got random number uh, but we're given that a range so it'll only have a random number um, in the screen bounds minus 100 and the minus 100's there just so um, it's not drawn like half off the bottom of the screen and if you mess around with them numbers you'll see why and I think what I'll do is as well um, when I attach the pictures I might as well just attach the source as well attach the actual Python file um, and then after we've worked out the coordinates we draw that to the screen and then um, 
from like the last tutorial it's exactly the same code really just um you get the uh, mouse coordinates and then you divide that by two so the mouse is um well we don't we're not showing the cursor but the center of the mouse is um the center of the crosshairs and then we draw that and then we've got um clock tick 20 which limits um the screen updates to like 20 times a second and then we finish off by updating um updating everything to the screen um and I'll run that again um I think I think it looks quite good the only problem is that um the pie moving across the screen is a bit jumpy I'm not sure if that's because um because we're in a virtual machine or something else but well I mean it's something I can improve in in the future but that's probably going to come when the actual Raspberry Pi is shipped and I can see what it's like running on that. Um, but there's, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do to make it smoother. Like, you don't have to update the whole screen. You can just update, like, certain pixels of the screen. So if you, if you work out what pixels have changed, then you can change them rather than updating the whole screen, which will um, consume a lot more processor time and take longer. So, um so yeah and I think what what I'll do for next time is I'm gonna um, I'll rewrite this cat um, or I'll rewrite parts of this just so um it's a bit it's a bit tidy because it's quite a long file so um I might split like the ob I might um put like the pie that moves across the screen into a class and you'll see what that is but basically um you'll be able to put all the code for that in one file and then just um then you can just say like import class uh, sorry import pi and then you'll just have to go um like pi dot new position and then just split that so um your actual main function here doesn't have all that code in um but i'll show you that next time anyway um i'd just like to say thanks to everyone who subscribed i've got 190 subscribers at the moment which is really nice and I'm going to keep these tutorials up. So thanks for watching and I'll, uh, I'll see you next week. Cheers.